I truly don't have the words for the destruction that the terrorists in our skies are causing, laying waste to what's yet left of Earth's life support systems. The further I go into the forest, the worse the carnage gets. Again, another beautiful gray pine, still surviving in spite of the onslaught of toxic spraying in our skies, but now brought down by the chemical ice nucleated winter weather event. This tree's done, dead, broken. Now we look around this corner, another massive specimen of gray pine, completely toppled over from the chemically nucleated cement snow. It's completely unnatural, it adheres to the trees, it adheres to the canopy, and topples them over because the root systems are weak and the toxic rain that's come down for how many years, how many decades. The root system's completely compromised. The feeder roots are dying off. The roots are dying off just like the canopy's dying off. And the trees are toppling all over the forest and nobody's saying anything. No official agency is saying anything. I don't know anybody in any official agency, and I know many in those agencies, none of them are willing to say anything about what's happening in the forest. The forest is being slaughtered. The forest die, we die. How long can this continue? This is an incredibly beautiful specimen. I know these trees. I know them all, and he stretches down off the side of the slope. He's dead. He's gone. That's it. Because some psychopathic power-hungry freaks at the top of the power pyramid feel they have the right to engineer Earth's climate, to play God with the weather, and to wreak this kind of havoc in the forest. They don't have that right. And when will the public turn off the football games and start understanding the entire ship is going down, and we are all on it? And the ship can't be kept afloat by a few who care. It can't be. It's up to all of us. In the bottom of one of the canyons on my habitat preserve, yet more trees tipped over from the recent chemically ice nucleated winter weather. This is this was a beautiful, unique gray pine. Gray pines all grow in very different shapes. They're all unique. Tipped over again by the chemically nucleated snow that adheres to the crown of the tree. I've had to cut this tree out of the way to open up the it's a game trail that comes through here and it's it's laying on top of other trees so I had to get it off of those trees so they could have a chance of recovering but you see how long the, the trunk is extended as it came down crushed this which was a very very unique specimen of buckeye nice large buckeye tree beautiful forest flora and as you see, as this tree came down, crushed part of this tree, this is a canyon live oak. It's the strongest oak in the forest because it's a, a evergreen tree. It's adapted to hold this snow load, but the snow load now very unnatural. You see how as this gray pine came down, crushed part of this canyon like live oak. It just leaves a massive trail of destruction in the forest as the climate engineers don't care. They don't care because they have an objective of confusing and dividing the population as to the true state of the climate, thus the engineered winter weather events. So we go from 80 degrees to snow back to 75 degrees in a matter of days and nobody notices. How can they not notice? The sun, it's 75 degrees right now, it's hot in the sun, and it snowed a few days ago. How do people not notice that something is radically, radically wrong in the forest? It's already incredibly weak, devastated from the constant bombardment of toxic precipitation that now it has to endure chemically nucleated snow and the extreme temperature variance because it does create a very cold layer at the surface a very unnatural cold how can the wildlife possibly endure this these radical fluctuations in, in temperature and weather this is weather warfare nothing short of weather warfare there's much more in the forest to see as far as the damage and decimation so Let's keep moving from location to location to try to give some idea of just how much destruction the climate engineers wreak in the forest with their weather warfare activities. More destruction visible from the chemical ice nucleated winter weather. That stub sticking up was a beautiful gray pine. The whole top has snapped off from the, this adhesive frozen material. Another gray pine has some foliage left. He'll survive but the entire top of the canopy snapped off. Did look like the tree next to him, formerly. You see the sun beaming down through the 
what's left of the fir trees, they're all sickly, all dying. That used to be a closed canopy where no sun penetrated. Now it beams through everywhere. You see in the background, the tops of the dead firs sticking up. Another damaged gray pine from previous chemically nucleated events. Massive dead fir there. They're all dying. They're literally all dying. This was some of the nicest trees on my habitat preserve. And now this once shaded and lush section of forest is now completely dying off. And it is incredibly heartbreaking to see this happen. Another fall tree just tipped from the nucleated snow. Dead fir here in the riparian area. His, his roots are in the water. There's no reason for that tree to die. You see even the tops are broken off, breaking off the alder trees, which again, grow right in the stream. The, the tops are weak, the UV's frying the tops. The trees are dying absolutely everywhere. No one notices. And this so-called winter day is 75 degrees in Northern California a few days after a snow. Alder tree again, looking sick. Fir tree that was extremely healthy only a decade ago, gone. And this, look up and see what was once an incredibly beautiful dug fir tree, now dead. Stone dead, probably 150 feet tall. Near a riparian area, north slope, no shortage of water, but all the toxins accumulate in the rain. They accumulate in the runoff areas, the riparian areas, and some of these trees are the first to die because of the toxins in the rain, and nobody's reporting it. No official agency will say anything because their paychecks and pensions depend on them not saying anything. All these areas I know so intimately. I've worked in the forest floor through all of these, these areas, thinning out the trees that were too thick in spots. These stumps you see here were incredibly beautiful, large, healthy dug fir trees only 15 years ago. They died. I fell them so that they wouldn't fall on their own and crush other trees that are still alive. But they're fewer and farther between. Another massive dead fir. Another massive stump here. An incredibly beautiful specimen of dug fir. Also dead because of the toxins in the rain that no one will report on. No so-called environmental protection agency, government offices are ignoring this, elected officials ignoring this. The forests die, we die. That's simple. Can't go much longer in this direction and how few see that even now. More snapshots of the carnage in the forest. See dead firs, this was all closed canopy only 10 years ago. All the firs have dead, are dead and dying. The ones that are still alive are on the cusp of death. But this was one of the most shaded and lush areas on my habitat preserve. What do you see now? Death, and what do you see beyond the dead trees? Another massive trail being laid. A constant barrage of toxic materials coming down in the air column, coming down in the precipitation. A stream that once contains trout, no longer. This was a completely shaded canopy on my habitat preserve. And now it's almost open. So the summer sun blazes down through this and changes the whole ecosystem. You see how long some of these species of flora have been here. You see that vine, that grapevine is probably 150 years old on that fir tree that's now dead. And the whole structure begins to fall apart. Traversing through one of the canyons on my habitat reserve, another casualty of the engineered winter weather event that just occurred in Northern California. This is a specimen of black oak. It's broken off completely at the trunk. The core wood is rotted from fungal infection that's now epidemic in the forest because the natural microbiome has been wiped out. And what happens when you do that? Undesirable elements then take over. Just like in the human body, when you take antibiotics and fungal infections proliferate, same thing happens in the forest. You see when this black oak fell, you can see 
The core wood is completely rotted. The Cambrian layer still survived. There's some shoots off of this tree. It still perhaps looked like it was more or less okay on the outside until it encountered something it should have encountered, this chemically nucleated mess. Too much weight on the crown, what was left of the crown, brought this tree down because the core was rotted. Again, this is epidemic throughout the entire forest. Going to venture further out in the forest now and see what we can find for what else may have fallen during this engineered winter weather event. This is yet another victim of the toxic soils, large black oak specimen, the snow, the recent chemically nucleated event has brought him down, but he was already dead because of fungal infection. Forest floor littered with dead and dying trees. This is all part of different sections on my habitat preserve on the east side of Lake Shasta. You see, let me pan around behind me. What do we see? More death. Four dead trees. The entire forest is dying. When will there be any official agency acknowledgement of what's happening? When will there be any media coverage? But no, all of these entities do exactly what they're told to by the power structure, those who provide their paychecks and pensions. Where's courage? Where's there any courage? Where's there any sense of responsibility to the whole? We can't live without functional habitat and the habitat is imploding by the day. I'm going to go further into the forest now to see how much more carnage there is, but it's absolutely catastrophic. And the rate accelerates, that's what people don't understand. They think because Walmart's open and because McDonald's is selling Big Macs that we can survive. We can't survive without functional habitat, period.